What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle, the day in the world of indie games. We are hanging out and checking out a title called Space Rain. We looked at a demo of this game not too long ago, probably about a year ago, and it impressed me. I liked it. I thought it was pretty rad. You guys know that I'm a fan of anything that lets me space dogfight, and this is definitely a space dogfighting game for sure. Right now, I'm in the middle of an escort mission, but if after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description where you can check it out. Aside from that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. But let's go ahead and get this thing hyped on up. So in Space Rain, what is the overall theming? Like, what is the title? The game is basically, you know, like Concord in EVE Online, how they show up to, like, mess anybody up that's breaking the rules inside a high sec. In this game, effectively, you're a paramilitary corporation that hires out to other corporations to handle law enforcement concerns. And so right now, I'm responding to a fleet beacon that said that they were under attack by pirates, and we needed to evac the crew and get them off the ship into a rescue vessel. And so I've taken my little fleet of fighters over here to respond to that law enforcement disruption. But that's the overall idea of the game is that you're kind of like a paramilitary law enforcement corporation. And the goal of the game is ultimately just to respond to things that happen in system. And that's about it. They're pretty far up ahead. Are they like in transit mode right now? What's going on there? I'm having trouble gaining distance on them. Look like they're giving my escort a pretty good run for her money, too. Let me see what I can do here to kind of aid with this. Kill speed a little bit. Oh, never mind. Got him with a missile. <laughs> I thought I was going to help, but it looks like my little fighter right there who's flying upside down right now while doing donuts apparently did not need my assist. The mission will officially be over when we take over to this side. The also alternative goal of the game is that we're kind of trying to like get a foothold in all of these systems as well. And so the game gives you a series of systems that you can deploy into that are of varying difficulties. And from there, most of them seem to be just kind of like a central hub area. There will be a number of enemy installations that you have to deal with along the way if you actually want to take control of that system and completely and totally pacify it. The game does have an impressive tactical layer that you can play around with in order to assign your units RTS style. If you've ever played something like Sins of a Solar Empire, uh, you can give right-click commands on there. You can tell them to escort. You can customize what weapons they use when they're actively in combat, how frequently they fire their missiles, how they respond to threats and things of that nature. I actually kind of need to, like, reload my guns. My guns have always been detected, too, huh? All right, let me get up by the escort real fast. Yeah, we just got booted out of our transit mode. All right, what do you want to do? Uh, we got a few more guys down here. We've already got our escort engaging. I'm going to go ahead and tackle this one right here. There we go. Let him have it. Let him have it, Junior. Let him have it. Let him eat the AC. Perfect. This ship is actually not fully equipped right now, so I was a little bit nervous about taking this mission just due to the fact that I hadn't tried a medium difficulty mission yet. Oh, he's got me out rotated. Okay, where's the last one at? Last one's right there. All right, let's stay on him. Let's see if we can put some love and touch and squeezing on that ass. Reload, reload, reload. Hey, and there it is. And as you can see, the game has cacophonous explosions, really, really cool lighting effects along the way. And I think that should be the runway to get us back to the station right there, hopefully. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my speed real quick. Uh, so let me give you a rundown of the HUD because there's a lot of things going on. And I like to drop into these videos active hot so that there's some action going on screen while I'm doing a little bit of an intro. But on the left-hand side of the screen where it says guns, those are my guns. Uh, I've got the CAC-01, I've got the KRW-01s. The KRW-01s are Gatling guns, and the CAC is an autocannon, a kinetic autocannon uh, that hits very, very hard, but can be a little bit of a challenge to lead, I guess. At the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a display that's telling you the status of all the various components of our ship. So our engine's a little bit damaged, our hull's been scuffed a little bit, our fuel... We're at 80% right now, so we're not in too bad of shape. Were we to go to the tactical view, we could also take a look at all the other ships inside of our fleet right now. I've had a little bit of a learning curve with this ship because I just swapped on into it. And in terms of ships, the game does have a decent variety right now, going from light fighters on up to frigates. They've got the frigates tasked as heavy units, so I don't know, or I guess as large units, so I don't know if there's a plan to put destroyers or cruisers or capital ships or anything else like that in the game, because to my mind, things like frigates, 
Corvettes, and maybe even Destroyers. All, all kind of like... Those to me qualify as medium craft, I suppose, with, I guess, Destroyers being sort of up in like the top tier of the medium craft, and then from there you get into like your battle cruisers, your cruisers, your carriers, things of that nature. But there are a wide selection of ships that you can play around with for right now. They've all got their own cockpit that's distinct. I checked that by buying this ship right before the video started. And our contract is complete. They actually made it back to the escort point. What I'd like to do now is let's go ahead and resupply. There you go, you can see me resupplying at this station. In fact, this ship did a really, really good job. I'm actually kind of shocked how little damage this ship took in the middle of the scrum. We'll get them resupplied as well. And then pretty much you just do like repeatable missions until you feel ready to go ahead and go after like the bigger enemy installations that are all throughout this galaxy. I haven't figured out exactly how to commence an assault just yet but there are assaults on like enemy gun batteries so there will be pirate stations and things inside these systems uh, that you will have to contend with that will deploy units onto the battlefield once you feel confident enough i have been told from going through the tutorials uh, that you will indeed be able to commence an assault using allied craft from the central station in order to go after the bad guys and tune them up a little bit but let's find us a job here we've got ourselves a search and destroy Let's go ahead and take that. Locate the target ships and destroy them before they leave the sector. Okay, sounds good. I think we can manage that. Let's go ahead and spin this Betty on around. She's not that maneuverable compared to my last ship. That's my only complaint about this one. She's a little heavier. She got a little bit bigger of a dumpy on her, and so she takes a little bit of getting used to. We're going to go ahead and hit the B key. That's going to put us into F, uh, well, sublight travel mode. So if you've played any kind of space game before, you always have, like, your jump travel, and then you have your in-system fast travel, effectively. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing right... Oh, I think I was actually in fast travel mode. That's why my turning was so subpar. But let's go ahead and pull on, and is my other ship with me right now? Ready. Yeah, you should fall back in and escort with me, please. I'm going to go ahead and cut throttle real fast until they catch up. All right, with the, with the throttle cut, my wingman's all up on me right now. At the moment, you're seeing me pilot two heavy fighters. There is a tangible difference in this game between a light fighter and a heavy fighter. A heavy fighter can definitely... A heavy fighter is a brawler. It's here to take some hits, and it's here to give some hits. With a light fighter, you have to be really careful, in my opinion, about being... Agile, I suppose, is the word that I would use. You don't want to soak a lot of hits in a light fighter because that thing will flame out on you the moment that it gets a chance. And so I've mostly been stocking out my fleet with medium fighters and trying out some of the different models just to see what we've got going on. The current ship that I'm flying is a heavy, heavy fighter, which has multiple rocket launcher points, uh, which most of the other heavy fighters only have one rocket launcher. What's going on over there? Debris field? Is that our target right there? Is that them? That's them. Okay, cut us out of FT mode. Let's get on in here and let's engage. They're going to close in with us. I don't have any missiles on this boat yet because I haven't gotten the ability to customize it. I have the ability, but not the means. I'm too poor. But it looks like we've got about four fighters that we're going to have to deal with over here. Go ahead and open up on them nice and salty at the beginning of the engagement. And one down. Bring her around over to here. And let's speed her up. Let's get that reticle on target. I don't know if tangibly we're going to hit any of that. Looks like they're mostly focusing on my homeboy over here. Let's bring her in. You will see me as a threat, sir. You will see me as a threat, or you will get buried in the deep. What else we got going on here? We got one more enemy? All right. Give him the AC. There it is. Oh, don't know if that affected my hull or not, but that was a little bit close. I felt that one whistle. Over there, we've got a control point. So if we knock those out, we actually gain control of this area of the galaxy. For right now, what is that right there? I've never seen that icon before. Let's go look at these. I'm curious what they are. That one's closer. It's moment. It's it's changing vector faster than the other one. So this one is the closer target right here. Let's have a look at it and see what it does for us, or if it's even anything worth noticing. It might be some kind of wreck or something.
Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. I think it's just like a wreck. Wonder if they're planning salvaging ops later on so that you're actually gonna have support ships and things that can strip these for parts. There's not a huge amount of customization in the game right now with where it currently stands. You can tell they're still getting the ship models and, and things hooked back up and sort how does my other ship doing? Is my other ship kind of chewed on? 95%, we could probably just take another job now. I mean, if we're already in the neighborhood, like where's this other search and destroy at? Over there, let's go ahead and lock onto it and see if we can uh, deal with some of the depravity and pirates up inside this system. Because I don't like no piratical business taking place inside my system. I like it nice and peaceful around here. I want to drink my mojito, I want to enjoy my Paloma, and I want to get paid as a contract operator in this system for mostly just hanging around and exuding soft power. That's about it. Looks like we got some more debris fields over here too. I'm really curious how we can use those because I played a salvager in EVE Online and so I love salvaging ships like being the crow that kind of picks through the bones of the dead. I always find that to be a really satisfying way to play the game. So here's our point right here. They want me to take a look around and see what we can find. We got something over there. That's a jump gate, though. Well, we've been detected, so wherever these pirates are, they know that we're here. Is that our guy right there? That's our guy. The Mongrel. A light fighter from the Marshall Gang with a 366 credit bounty on his head. I plan to collect. You're nothing but money to me! Let's do this thing. Engage. Let's throw down. We should have weapons locked. He's coming straight at us, so it should be a fairly easy shot if he keeps flying into it. Oh my god, he collided with me. He's a maniac. They're like, they're, they're like, they're like raiders. Oh god. Fire chaff. Uh, that blip, 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 noise you just heard. Uh, that's a bad noise. That's a noise you don't want to hear. It means the enemy has a target lock on you and they've launched a missile. And so you gotta spam the G key. You can see a little rotating ring on my HUD that says 5CM. I'll hit it again right there. You see how it says 3, 2, 1, CM? Uh, those are countermeasures. They self-replenish. You don't have a limiting supply of them, but you can only fire five at a time. And so part of the risk reward of the game is sort of figuring out how many countermeasures do I fire for a particular missile? Because no countermeasure is actually guaranteed to get rid of a missile. It's just a chance that it will get rid of that missile. And so you've got to kind of balance the weight of it. Like if people are firing light missiles at you, no biggie, no harm, no foul. This is not the kind of game where one missile barely brushes across the wing of your ship and instantly destroys you. However, in the case of something like a swarm of missiles, those are going to start to sting. Those are going to hurt a little bit. Or if you start getting up to like heavy missiles that have a fast turn radius, those things have, they, they have a tendency to punch above their weight. You definitely don't want to get hit by those. And so my advice is whenever you hear that terrible meh, 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 meh noise, just start, just start slamming that G key, man. If you don't like the keybinds for this game, it does have customizable keybinds. You can take a look inside of here. In fact, I was thinking about instead of where it's at right now. Oh, it doesn't detect my side buttons on my mouse. That's a bummer. I was gonna rebind it to the, the thumb switch on my mouse so that I could fire it from there, but it doesn't look like I can do that. I would definitely recommend they add that on in. Lots of people playing games nowadays that have a lot of extra buttons on their mouse. Uh, I would like to be able to bind that. I'm a big fan of thumb buttons on mice. I bind them to like everything. Like, if I'm playing a game and I don't have, like, key binds for thumb button one, thumb button two, shift thumb button one, shift button, like, thumb button two, I'm in trouble because I like those a lot. That tends to be, like, the first thing that I bind on up. And let's go ahead and pull her on in nice and soft to the station. You can resupply at the station. There's no, like, walking around the dry dock right now or anything else like that. I don't know why it keeps saying corporation rank has been increased without getting it off my screen. I'm guessing that's maybe- Oh, it went away! Yay, finally! It was there for a couple of minutes in between that edit, so I was like, when is that gonna go away? Uh, you can order your ships to resupply really, really easily. It'll fix up your hull, it'll give you all your missiles back, and then you also need to select the other guys in your fleet and tell them to resupply. You can enable auto-resupplying whenever you're inside the radius of the station. I usually just put it on auto like that. 
uh, so that every time I'm near the station inside of like three or four kilometers, they know that they need to deploy out a drone to come and resupply me. But I'm very, very happy with this build. Uh, we haven't played this since the demo came out a long, long time ago. And the demo, it wasn't buggy, but there was like these weird little points of friction. And what I mean by weird little points of friction, uh, we got a 5,000 credit search and rescue right there. We can take that. I'll go ahead and lock that on in. What I mean by points of friction is that, like, with search and destroy missions, for example, you would pull up to the search and destroy spot, and there would be a whole lot more search than destroy. Sometimes the enemies wouldn't show up or spawn at all, and so I'd have to go back to station, cancel a mission out, come back. Uh, this time around, everything is flowing smoothly. I have had zero bugs for the two hours that I've spent with this game so far. I usually try to make a point of telling you guys how much I've played the game before recording these videos, because I think that context is really, really important. There's a lot of people out there that think I don't have time to play all these games, but it's my job. I work 50 hours a week doing it. Seven days a week, most weeks, in fact. And so... I put the hours in. Sometimes I don't get the time that I would like to with a title, but typically between, like, sometimes I just go in blind, and sometimes I play for up to 12, 20 hours before I make a video. It just sort of depends. So I try to make a point of calling it out, but that aside, put to the side, I have had, like, no bugs and no weird friction this time around. It seems like now that the game is in commercial release and early access, they've got a pretty polished dogfighting product on their hands. We need to move to Intercept. Those red dots right there are 100% going after our escort. So this ship right here is stranded. The way that this mission always seems to go. Okay, they're coming in hot. They want it. Fair enough. Let me see what I can do here. I've got my guns on gimbals because I prefer gimbal dogfighting. Uh, some people don't like the gimbal dogfighting. It's up to you. You get a choice at the beginning of the game uh, whether or not you feel like gimbling is something you want to do or whether you want to have stiff weapon mounts. I, got him. I tend to prefer gimbals, just me personally. And so the gimbling does make the combat feel a little bit more arcadey. But I do like the fact that you can tailor that to your own desires. I almost universally like gimbal dogfighting over stiff mount dog fighting as just me personally but i've got like a little bit of gimbling going on uh, to make things a little bit simpler now that we've rescued this ship from its assailants we pretty much just have to sit here and wait until the rescue boat comes by and once the rescue boat comes here all right you can stop showing off bro you can stop i saw that little zero flight assist drift mood you just did you don't need to flex on me like that the ai is very good at piloting in this game they pull off some ridiculous maneuvers in my opinion if I had to describe the flight model in this title, I would say it rests somewhere in between in between playing Elite Dangerous with flight assist on and flight assist off. So there are little things that the game has like inertial dampeners that are going to make your life easier. However, more arcadey inclusions uh, like strafing, for example, or drifting upwards and downwards using RCS control do not exist. Some of the ships, you can actually see them firing RCSs. There's our next engagement. Some of the ships, you can see them firing RCSs, which makes it weird that you can't, like, strafe a little bit or, like, ascend or descend a little bit. But maybe I just need to go through the control. Man, that guy got whooped on on his way in. He had a terrible day. Let's go ahead and defend the escorts, get a target lock on this dude. None of that hit, huh? I guess we don't really much have to worry about it. Our escort's so good at what they do that I kind of don't need to be here. I'm feeling a little bit like an auxiliary toenail right now. I'm like an extra toenail on the foot that doesn't need to be here. What is that right there? Is that another incoming fighter? We got another incoming fighter. Let's go ahead and take him. Yeah, we're watching. Uh, they have added voice acting to the game. I don't know if that was there the last time that I have played the title. But it all seems to be done reasonably well. There's not, like, a ton of it, but there's little flavor text. It doesn't vary up too much, so after you've played the game for a little while... Ooh, auto cannon doing work and right through the debris field. After you've played the game for a while, it gets a little bit repetitive, but it's no big deal. It's just, like, flavor barks. Effectively, the bark matrices working over time. Uh, one thing that I would like to see is that the missions get a little bit repetitive. Now, I'm in the first zone at the moment, which is very much kind of like the, the newbie sector. 
uh, where most of the missions are kind of gimmies and you're very unlikely to get crazy scuffed up. It's basically for you to get your space legs put together. But what I would like to see is more diversity inside of the missions. Uh, the current mission sets that I've seen is that you've just got assaults, you've got search and destroy, you've got escorts, and you've got search and rescue. And I don't think that I've seen anything else come up on the horn during that time. We got two more contacts over on this edge. I'm okay with there being a limited number of mission types, but if that's going to be the case, the limited number of mission types, in my opinion, where's this guy's targeting at? Oh, he's way out there. Okay. Couple little dinks right there. Not much though. Not much more than scratching the pen. Oh, never mind. I got him. Hey, did you just claim my kill? That was mine. I did that one. Let's give him a little touch and yeah, just make him move. Make him think about his vectors a little bit. You okay? All right. 100% health on our escort. We're good. Let's go back. And I think it should just be the station run at this point. But as I was saying, if they're going to have limited selections on what kind of missions are here, uh, I can't wait for the narrative to be in, is my first thought. Because when I get bored of doing the same content over and over and over again, I tend to lean on playing through a, a narrative campaign in order to break up that boredom before I go back to farming up some cash. Uh, but that being an aside, they either need to add more mission types or they can add mutators to the mission that create effectively branch points. Uh, so, like, let's say you go out to rescue a ship that put out a distress call. Now, there would be a chance that when you get there, it's actually a distress call. There would also be a chance that when you get there, they pretend to be guys that need rescue until the rescue boat arrives, and they're actually trying to hijack and steal the rescue boat, and so then it's an ambush, effectively, and after you dispense with that, you can just go back to the station and get your paycheck. Another way they could do it is that, like, when the escort is halfway back, uh, they'll be like, hold on, something rattled loose over here. we got to divert to this spot in order to resupply here. And then we'll go back to the station after that, and after we get, like, you know, an actuator fixed or something. Like, just little narrative flavors on here and there that change things around. Or, you know, the ability to betray your contracts, reputation, all that kind of stuff. To add a little bit more texture and whatnot to the missions. Uh, let's go ahead and stop the ship up real fast and we'll resupply. But it should just be a straight shot, and we should just get our paycheck here. And as you can see, our little buddy's flying into the dock right there. Another mission complete by the Space Cops. Contract successful. So every time you finish a contract, you're going to get some money, and you're going to get some XP. For right now, the XP doesn't really do a whole lot, except for make your fleet larger. So every time I level up, I've gotten access to another fighter slot so far. I would like to see a skill tree or something for this right here that sort of develops your, your corporate, I guess, market strategy. Since they've said at the beginning of the game that we are a corporate force that's acting as a defense force for other corporations, effectively private security for their concerns... It would be cool to see this sort of developed out into a skill tree that develops your fleet doctrine, what kind of things you're good at. You know what I mean? Are you like hammer and anvil? Are you like wolf pack tactics? Like what things do you excel at and then give passive buffs to that sort of play style so like your fighters get better turning if you're fighter focused. Uh, small machine guns get a damage bonus if you're going into sort of cruiser combat, destroyer combat and stuff like that. You could get things like an extra missile in each salvo or you could get extra explosive payload in each salvo because you've dedicated your skill tree effectively to being good at those things when launched from those platforms because that's inside your corporate modus operandi. And so hopefully they develop that out a little bit more. The developers have said that they have a major content patch coming around the beginning of summer, so they said kind of like the end of April, beginning of June from what I saw on the forums. And so there is a content patch coming, and they said it's a very large content patch up on the forums. So I guess we'll kind of have to wait and see what's going on with that. I personally just wanted to sort of update my coverage because we covered this when it was in a demo format, and it was a little bit rough. I'm happy to say that now in the release, it is much smoother and flowing much better than it was the last time I played the game. There are some new ships on in here. I don't recall exactly how many ships there were the last time I played the game, but I don't recall it being that many. 
many, so it seems like the content patches up until now have mostly been focused on adding more ships to the game and more equipment to the game. Those are good areas to focus on. All of that stuff needs development and for purchase purposes for you, an actual consumer, uh, this is a game that still has a long road in front of it when it comes to all these various systems that they're trying to get tacked out. Now, what I'm doing on screen right now is I'm heading back to the system jump gate. You can jump out and go back to your corporate headquarters at any time in this title if you want to, so long as you're not in combat. And you will actually frequently have to do that in order to bump up your ships and make sure that they've got the equipment they need to be effective in combat and develop up your fleet and get a few more ships and things of that nature, replace your losses. Losses in this game are permanent. I'm not super sure how I feel about that. I guess I'm okay with it. I'd be more okay with it though if the game had like a concrete saving system where I could save anywhere in the system and load from anywhere inside of the system. As of right now, there are no quick saves, there are no manual saves or anything else like that. I think it saves whenever you go back to your corporate headquarters, as far as I can tell. And there's our jump gate right there, we'll head on out. There's no animation or anything for the sling gate throwing you. Uh, it just takes you back to the main menu effectively where you can start fiddling with your corporation. And this is where I would like to see also like corporate doctrines and things like that you can work on. I'd actually like to see individual pilots as well that develop their skills and they have their own skill trees and things like that. Uh, so that you can have like these pilots that have been with you for like the entire run. Maybe give them little personalities sort of mech warrior style where you've got like the bloodthirsty ones. You got the ones that kind of stammer and stutter and sound a little bit nervous. You've got the ones that are like cool, you know what I mean? And always cool and collected under fire and using fun language, things like that. There's lots of things that like this game is a completely open ground as far as I see it right now, largely because what they've got inside the game works. So I assume there's not going to be that much need for bug testing because the gameplay experience seems fairly smooth. That makes me hopeful that we're just in content churn mode right now. And it sounds like from what they've been putting out and what they're planning, that may be the case. So this is our fleet that we have right now. You can do some light customization to these fleets if you want to. You can also go in and inspect the ship. This is the ship that I've been piloting right here. I picked it because it has kind of like a cool stealth bomber thing going on. And it's got the little paper airplane wings right there that like fold upwards. I don't know, but I always like that. I always think that looks good. Uh, we can also take a look at our other ships should we desire to do so. Uh, that's the one that I was piloting before. It, it's, it looks kind of like a pancake waffle triangle with a big box of missiles strapped to the bottom of it. But this ship's really, really good. I like it a lot. Now, my ship is actually launcher-focused, which is why I think it struggles so much in gun combat. So what I'd like to do is, there's torpedoes that we can fit on here. Now, I couldn't put torpedoes on my last ship. Torpedoes are what you want if you're trying to, like, bat outside of your league. We could get light missiles. So we've got the SM-17Ms. These have decent agility and accuracy against nimble targets. It is a go-to anti-fighter missile. It's short-range, however. What's the difference with this one right here? It's a medium light missile. So it looks like we're just getting a fat damage increase on those guys, but we get a loss in agility and also a lock in ammo that we have available. So these guys right here have 8 ammo, which is ultimately going to give us 1,200 total damage. These are going to come out a little bit more positive, assuming you can hit them, but losing one of these missions to ECMs or to countermeasures is going to hurt a lot more, especially considering countermeasures come back. You have an infinite amount of them, so... If even one countermeasure drops one of these missiles, it really, really hurts. So I would say that I'm much more likely to pick up the SM-17Ms and throw those on there. We have another launcher over here as well. I do like the swarm missiles for smaller targets, so I'll strap some of those on too. And now we're fully equipped on out with our missile tubes and ready to rock. I don't think we have enough money to pick up another fighter just yet. I would like to pick up another fighter, but I don't think that we're there. I think I'll probably pick up a medium fighter next, something fast and agile. I don't have an Ares yet either, but that only has one gun and two launchers, huh? Is it just the hull integrity that's a little bit better? Oh, it's got better damage mitigation too. 
Okay. What's also interesting is that there's planned on being some kind of like ECM warfare in this game, as far as I can tell, because different ships have different heat signatures and like different radar signatures and when they show up on pings. And so that's also an interesting area that there, there's a lot of things here that I'm like, yeah, I'd like to see where that goes, but it's not quite there yet, you know? However, as far as dogfighting simulators go, normally with games like this, I'm used to like my pilots just like flying against a wall and like not even functioning and doing a very, very piss poor job. My experience thus far has been that everything works here pretty well. And there's probably enough content for you to eat up like, if you don't get bored of the repetitive missions, there's probably enough content here to get you like 10 or 15 hours just building up a fleet. Like I haven't even gotten to heavy escorts and destroyers and frigates and things like that in the first couple hours. I need to get, I want to get another ship because then I'm going to start taking on medium missions which pay a little bit better. But for right now, the light missions aren't really much of a threat to me. Arriving at our point here, we've already got targets locked on in. Let's go ahead and go into missile mode so that you can see what that looks like. Let's move to intercept. I don't know if my other fighter is going to get super aggressive right now. Is that one closer? That one's definitely closer. Are we at 3k lock range? Engaging the enemy. We're at 2k lock Engaging range. Target. Gotcha few more targets up in the area that need to be dealt with. Let's move on them, get the missiles going. And there it is, missiles away. Little swarm launchers are pretty good, aren't they? Mean little Bettys. We'll try out the single missiles here too because I'm still FT blocked, which leads me to believe that I'm about to fight with something else. Yeah, there we are right there. Let's see if the lock range is a little bit better on these missiles. I don't know if I can shoot down my own missiles, but as you can see, missiles are a huge force multiplier in this game. If your ship doesn't have missiles on it yet, consider getting some missiles because missiles are, missiles are nasty in this title. But as far as Space Rain goes, I think the game's in a great spot right now. I think it's a lot of fun if somewhat a little bit repetitive. I think there's room for quality of life. So on escort missions, there's no way as far as I can tell, maybe I can command my own ship to escort. I didn't try that in the tag menu by commanding my own ship to autopilot escort, but I would like to see a little bit finer control on velocity while you're flying using the middle scroll wheel uh, to make that meter on the left that I'm wiggling right now to set our throttle up and down with more fine control. I'd also like to see the ability to match velocity to things that I'm escorting uh, so that I'm not constantly fiddling with my throttle just to like stay with them, you know what I mean? Uh, that was a little annoyance that I came across. But other than that, this one's pretty much in a state right now where you just gotta wait for content because everything that's here is clean, polished, running well, and I haven't had any issues. It's a visual spectacle. It's an interesting take on a space game, sort of that freelancer mercenary idea where you're not just one pilot doing your own thing in space. You're actively a corporation that is trying to expand your influence and get future defense contracts with other corporations that are trying to pacify their area of the galaxy. I kind of dig that whole space cop motif. And so my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with Space Rain, which I think is cool. Uh, if somewhat content repetitive and content light, the good news is it's in early access and they have a big patch coming in the next two months. Uh, so that should lead to fun things. Well, I guess May comes after April, huh? Did I say April, June? They said late April. So like April, May, I guess spring. I'll redact that. Maybe I'll try to go back and edit that and see if I can find it on the overall vocal performance for today's video because I actually forgot what order the months go in in the heat of dogfight combat. You know, we, we had like a, we had a space death shooty fight going on. I needed a space death shooty fight, guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but for now, this is all I've got. Oh yeah, third person. There's no third person, if that's a deal breaker for you. I went through the controls. There's no third person mode that you can play inside of. I'm a cockpit flyer. That's just me personally. I usually try to fly from the cockpit in most games, but occasionally I do like to open it up and fly in third person. So, you know, it'd be nice to have it as an option for when I'm tired of being inside. I assume this cockpit must smell like the inside of a bat suit after the mission, dude. It can't smell good in here. I've been in here for like weeks. I haven't showered or anything. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye, folks.